Well, good morning, everyone. I hope that uh, you've enjoyed a great week and are looking forward to heading into the weekend. Uh, this morning, I'm going to be in Matthew chapter number seven, and uh, I'm going to give you a pattern of living that the Lord can bless. Now, obviously, it's not going to be exhaustive. It's just going to be an element or two, and it's going to be a sequence of coming before the Lord and, and asking so that we can receive what we need for each day, and then than living by a specific narrow set of values that God can bless. And so I'm going to start in chapter number seven of Matthew, verse number seven, very familiar passages if you uh, have spent any time in the word of God. Uh, and so I hope that this is an encouragement to you. If you have not, take some time because there's really... Uh, I'm skipping over lots of stuff as we travel through here. Uh, in fact, the first few verses of the chapter are about the hypocrisy uh, that uh, many experience when they're judged uh, by others for having a sin and then finding out that that person uh, lives in, the, in, in a similar fashion. And so we're supposed to be very careful to deal with our own selves uh, and make sure that I am walking with the Lord before I make accusation or, or highlight or, or point out somebody else's sin. Uh, that I don't stand in that position in hypocrisy. And and yet uh, we come to the next phrase. It's interesting that it, from study to study or from topic to topic, the Lord is really hitting us in the areas that we live. And so uh, verse number 70 says this. He says, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. What an invitation. He's saying, hey, <laughs> look, I have what you need if you'll only seek for it by asking me. Uh, look at verse number eight. It says, For every one that asketh receive it, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Uh, or, or what man is there of you whom, if his son asks bread, will you give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will you give him a serpent? I mean, th there it is. He says, If I'm a good father, why would you assume that if you ask for something that is good for you, that I would give you something that's bad for you? Uh, this is uh, in verse number 11. If ye then being evil know uh, how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your father which is in heaven give you good things, uh, give good things to them that ask of him? Now remember, uh, the, the criteria is not anybody who says they're a child of God. You must be a child of God. That means you must have placed your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to save you for your, from your sins. That There's that act of, of repentance and humble request of salvation to enter into this relationship with the Lord. And then there's a process of right living. God says, if you'll ask me, I will fuel your life for right living. He says, therefore, all things whatsoever ye, ye would that men should do unto you, do even... Uh, uh, so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Isn't that a powerful thing? He just switches from ask and you'll have everything you need to live the life that I've asked you to live. He didn't say I'll give you everything that everybody else has. He says, I'll give you everything you need to live out the life that I've asked you to live. And then he says, make sure though that you apply this by doing to others what you would want them to do unto you. And wow, we've just come through. In fact, I think we're still neck deep or in over our heads in a situation where everyone's name calling. And I don't think that there's a righteous group in us. You know, I think that there's a uh, there's just this attitude of uh, making sure everyone pays for what they've done. And and this is a this isn't a one side that does it and the other side doesn't. This is a, everyone's doing this. Social media, the ability to be rude from a distance has really broken our testimony to the lost world. We say and do things to people because we think that uh, I'm kind of over here in my little bubble. And just because I said it in a digital platform doesn't mean I'm accountable for it. Well, God says, what you want other people to do to you, do that to them. And so you have to ask yourself, he goes on in the next couple of verses, and here's where, where it really narrows things, as you'll hear me say it. He says, enter ye, enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way that lead, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Okay, so uh, we found this path because God illuminated it to us through people and through circumstances. He drew us into a relationship because someone cleared away the garbage for us to see the narrow entrance. 
Well, God is asking us to do the same for others. He's saying, hey, what you would want people to do to you, do unto them. Well, let's clear the path or clear the entrance to the path so they can see Jesus and make their way into eternal life. Yes, this is a pattern uh, for living that God will bless. Well, the gospel is the most important thing to the Lord Jesus, to, to God and his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we need to make sure we're about that. If we'll get our lives uh, wrapped around that, we will enjoy fulfillment like never before. I hope this helps you have a great day.